When I was a boy, we had these televisions, and it'd be like, whoop, and then whoop. There was this long tube, see? And at the back of this tube, there were some wires sticking out, and there was, uh, well, there was a process in here by which you'd heat up a little bit of metal, and you'd make the metal very, very negative. Okay, so this is hot cathode, and you'd create a cathode ray by creating a positive grid in here, or a screen, through, it's just a screen of metal, and positive, well, let's call it a positive grid. Now, what would happen is, the hot cathode is spewing electrons off, so the electrons go pew, 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 and they wanna go that way because there's a really big electric field inside here. The electric field is pointing to the right because this is a positive grid and a negative, hot, whoa, yeah, and I should point out that that's a negative cathode. And the electrons go pew, 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 and they come out of here, so some of them hit the positive grid, and that sucks, because they don't get to do anything. But some of them make it through. They just happen to be aimed right smack into the middle of the grid, and so they go through here. In fact, quite a lot of them go through here, and so we've got these electrons that are going really fast this direction. And then <clears throat> what you do is you, uh, you can steer this beam of electrons, and if I wanted to, um, if I wanted to show, so this is you out here. You are watching the, uh, television, those are your eyelashes, they look very nice, that's a lot of mascara, you maybe shouldn't wear quite that much. But you're watching the television right here, and you're seeing the phosphor, let's say that there's an image right here, it's like a picture of a box, and you see a picture of a box because the electrons are hitting the part of the front of the screen there, and there's a phosphor, and the electrons hit the phosphor, which excites the phosphor, that emits light, and then that light comes out into your eye. Of course, the light is also going all the other directions as well, so your friends who are sitting over there can also see it. That's cool, but I wanna talk about how the electrons, which were once aimed straight for the middle of the screen, managed to get up to here. This is, you guessed it, called a cathode ray tube. Because here's the cathode, and this is a tube with no air inside of it. I guess if you had air in there, the electrons would hit the air and do all kinds of crazy things, probably emit x-rays and other exciting things, because they're going really fast. So, uh, and, uh, and it's called a ray because there's a beam of these electrons that's shooting through here, and you can steer the beam with magnetic fields. So you create a magnetic field so that there's a force on the electrons that are moving really fast in it, and that causes them to turn that direction. I guess if I had electrons going this way, we had electrons going this way, and I want their force to be upward, I just need the magnetic field to go into the page. So my magnetic field, I think I started this convention where my magnetic field's gonna be green. If my magnetic field is into the page, and of a certain strength right here, then I cause my electrons to turn to their right. And that, I used my left hand for what reason? I forgot. You tell me, you figure it out. Okay, so the electrons are going to be aimed up there because of the presence of a magnetic field, and that force is the charge of the electron times the velocity of the electron crossed into the magnetic field. And remember, V cross B requires that V be at least somewhat normal to B. If it's not entirely normal to B, that's okay. One component of V that's parallel to the magnetic field might not change, and the component of V that is normal to the magnetic field might actually change. So you could get really interesting combinations. You can get, um, actually, you can get things moving in helices. So this is a force, and it's a cross product, and it's Q times V times B. It's magnitude, rather. If we're looking for the magnitude of this force, it would be Q times V times B times the sine of the angle between V and B. So, I'm gonna take this equation right here and I'm gonna encourage you to think of this. What if, what if this box were just a dot? What if we were aiming all of our electrons at one single point? You would see a stream of electrons right there and who the heck cares whether there's a wire around them or not? So, we could pretend It's electrons moving in a wire. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, electrons moving in a wire. Well, we call that, where I'm from, we call that current. Mm-hmm. So what I'm talking about is making a current go through a wire. And let's get ourselves a wire. And, uh, well, how long... <clears throat> 
time to flow. How long will it take an electron to get from here to here? I guess that time, well, you know, we've defined the idea of an electron's velocity. It's probably drift velocity. It's going to be the drift velocity electron, oh man, because the, that's going to be a net effect. But anyway, let's just say that velocity is the distance that it has to go, which I'm going to call the length of this wire, divided by the time that it takes to get from one place to another. So I'm going to call this, uh, well, I guess I can call the time that it takes to flow will simply be the length of the wire divided by the velocity of the electron. And I know that there's a force on this electron as it's moving that direction because of the current. And that force is Q times V uh, B times the sine of theta, as we just established a moment ago. Now, <clears throat> I guess my next question is how much charge flows? How much charge flows in that time. Ooh, while the charge goes from here to here, how much is going through a certain segment of that? And that, of course, is Q. It depends on the current. You remember that uh, current is charge over time. So let me put that up here. Sorry, current is charge over time. So I'm solving for Q. That's going to be I times delta T, which is simply I times L over the speed of the electrons. Look, I'll just plug that in right there. This is going to be a dark slide, all, all black. No, nope. no, nope, we're going pink right now. Pink. Here we go. So my plan is to plug in what Q is here and leave everything else the same. So I'm going to say that this is I times L over V times V times B. Ooh, look at that times V right there. Ooh, do you see what I see? I'm going to take some purple here and I'm going to cross that out because it's gone. Now, I can rearrange this a little bit. This is sometimes seen as ILB. This is the magnetic force. This is a magnetic force. Magnetic force is ILB is not a very nice thing to say to someone. You would in fact prefer to use the commutativity of multiplication to say that magnetic force is Bill. Hi magnetic force, I'm Bill. No, your magnetic force, you're Bill, I'm doctor, so let us then Wait a second, have we just derived the force on a current carrying wire? We have indeed. This must be the angle between the current direction and the magnetic field. The angle between the current and the magnetic field. And this means that every wire that carries a current in a magnetic field if it's oriented in the right direction, will feel a force. And this force can combine in beautiful ways, as we'll see in the next video. That's it.